Hello, I'm Ros Atkins. On today's World Have Your Say, we're going to go here to the Falkland Islands, or the Malvinas, as some of you will call them. We'll also go to Buenos Aires as well, because we're just a few days away now from the 30th anniversary of the Argentine invasion of the Falklands. So we travelled to them and also to Argentina to bring together two groups of people to talk about how they feel about the war and about each other. And of course, we'll show you what we filmed and then we'll give you plenty of time to talk to us about how you feel this centuries old dispute should be resolved. Well, last week I traveled to the Falkland Islands along with several members of the World Have Your Say team. Meanwhile, Sheila Fogarty and another team went to Buenos Aires. And our trips culminated in a live discussion between a group of islanders and a group of Argentines. Now, I'll show you how that went in a few minutes' time. But first of all, let me and Sheila introduce you to some of the places and the people that we visited. It was on the 2nd of April 1982 that Argentina invaded these islands. To the people who live here, these are the Falklands. But to the men who came ashore on a beach just over there, and to Argentina today, these are the Malvinas. Now, two and a half months later, on the 14th of June 1982, across the water there in Stanley, the commander of the Argentine forces surrendered to the British. And while a whole generation may have passed since this conflict claimed the lives of almost a thousand men, the tension between the UK and Argentina on this issue remains. And perhaps we shouldn't be surprised. A cursory look at the history books tells us people have been arguing over this part of the South Atlantic for many centuries. So World Have You Say has come here and also to Argentina to try and understand how people feel about the war about these islands and also about each other. I'm in Plaza San Martín in the centre of Buenos Aires, a rather wet and cloudy Buenos Aires. It's rush hour, people coming and going in cars and on foot. But this ceremony that you can see behind me, they do this every day without fail. And they do it in honour of the young men, the young Argentinian men, who died in Las Malvinas, or the Falklands as it's known in Britain. And unlike the Falklands, where there are battlegrounds that people can visit, there are graves that people can visit, it's where the action took place. This memorial, this plinth with these names on, is the only memorial in Argentina to the young men who died in that war. So these are the names of the 655 young Argentinian men who died in the war in Las Malvinas or the Falklands. Chao, Julio, Ruben, Matiel, Enrique, Alejandro, Rios, Hector, Ruben, Villa, Jose, Orlando. Their families come here throughout the year to pay their respects, presumably on birthdays and other significant dates and leave flowers sometimes as well. And 30 years on, as the battle still rages over who these islands belong to, it's a very sobering thing to stand in front of the names of all of the young men who lost their lives in that war. Over 600 Argentine servicemen died during the conflict, and 230 of them are buried here in this cemetery in what feels like the middle of a wilderness. And the reason that these men rest here is that at the end of the war, the British offered to repatriate their bodies, but the Argentine government said, no, the Malvinas is part of Argentina and they can be buried here. And so they were. And we can debate whether that was the correct decision or not. But some argue that this is yet another example of how pride and stubbornness on both sides has got in the way of this centuries-old conflict being resolved. For many years after the war, Argentines weren't allowed to visit, but that changed with the deal in 1999, and now it's quite normal for there to be Argentine visitors on the islands. We met a group of veterans as they returned to where they'd fought at Goose Green, and I was curious to know from them if they felt Argentina had benefited in any way from the war. I see nothing good from the war in 1982. All I saw was death and sadness. In my opinion, some of what we have here enables us to carry on with our lives from a war that gave us nothing positive. The governments need to talk now. 
I'm in Plaza de Mayo, which is the financial, historical and political heart of Buenos Aires. The presidential palace is behind me, the Casa Rosada, which is where Eva Perón gave her speeches in front of those huge crowds. There are banks all around me. The stock market is just to my right. There's representations of the grandmothers, las abuelas, who danced alone. You might remember those scenes with the missing, the ghosts almost, of their missing male relatives uh, under the military junta in the 70s and very early 80s. Just in front of me as well is an encampment that's been here for some time now of men who insist that they are veterans of the Falklands War, although their government disagrees. And when it comes to Las Malvinas or the Falklands, depending on what you call it, have there been any benefits from it for Argentina? The only benefit is that it was the last straw and it helped us get rid of the dictatorship. But uh, I think sooner or later we will have gotten them out because the economy was very bad and we would have conquered democracy even without the war. So I think it's sad that we had a war. I think they are Argentine, of course, no? because I live here, I think uh, they, are, they are ours. We are not enemies. We want to live with them, we want to, they start to uh, be part of our Argentinian's life. Not far at all from Goose Green is Darwin. It's a cluster of houses in a spectacular setting and it's owned by a couple called Ken and Bonnie. And they, like all the islanders that we met, have next to no trust in Argentines. The Argentines are the enemy and you expect the enemy to, to do you damage. But you don't expect your friends to do you damage. And when they do, it feels like a real and very profound betrayal. They're still the enemy, are they? Well, because they're trying, they covered our home uh, and they, they continue to cover our home. As long as that happens, they're going to be the enemy. If they would give up, if they would relinquish their claim to the islands, then I think we could all get on rather better than we do. Do you think that David Cameron ought to be doing a better job of putting the Falklanders case? Well, it would be nice if he did. Um, I'm very aware that diplomacy is best carried on in secret and, and I have no doubt that there are quite serious diplomatic efforts going on. Um, but certainly from the point of view of people living here who keep on um, hearing about more measures being taken against the Falkland Islands, it would be nice to have something, uh, a response from Britain uh, that were more public. And this level of hostility is not one way. It's so humiliating to Argentina to great, what Great Britain had been doing to our country since 1833 when they invade Malvinas by force that we are going to take any action that is possible pacifically to force Great Britain to sit with Argentina in the United Nations. Even if it limits the trade you can do? In Even the if it limits the trade because trade can be substituted with other countries' trade. Do you sometimes wish that you could export your lamb and your wool to Argentina? Argentina's economy is uh, all over the shop. You'd be struggling to get any kind of continuity dealing with the Argentines, in my experience. If there wasn't a sovereignty claim and they didn't keep banging their drum all the time, it's entirely possible that uh, relations could be better. But that aside, they'd still have to uh, pay the right price for our product. Clearly, no agreement there then. It appears that while the issue is the most important to islanders, while Argentines care, the Malvinas must take their place among a list of concerns from the economy to football. I don't think that Falklands are so important here. Um, I think it's just a, a, a political thing. I don't think that people here are, are so interested in that. Football is everything for Argentina. In my opinion, uh, compared to the Falkland staff or Malvina staff, football goes first. As a sports fan, I can tell you, it goes first. I think it's the healthiest way to deal with this because honestly, we don't have anything to say about English people because we don't have any problem, you know, what? It's between states and governments and things. I think it's very healthy and it's very fun. And I tell you a secret, whenever we play in the World Cup, for us there is no World Cup we don't play against Brazil or England. I've been talking with Islanders all day long and there are two things which 
most people readily share. The first is how long they and their families have lived here. People say things like, I'm sixth generation. And the second is their animosity towards Argentines or Argies, as almost everyone refers to them. One woman said, they're a race which can't be trusted. Another man said he'd never consider doing a deal with Argentina because it's corrupt and it never does what it says it's going to. So I've come to one of Stanley's most popular pubs, the Victory Bar, to speak with its barwoman and find out whether what I've been hearing is a true representation of what the islanders think. A few of the fellas come here from Argentina recently and they've actually come here with t-shirts on saying East Les Malvinas and just showing it out to everybody, going around the pubs with them and I don't think they should be here, personally. So you wouldn't even want them coming as visitors because for instance I was up at the Argentine cemetery earlier and there was a small group of Argentines visiting, you would rather that doesn't happen? I think we don't mind them coming and visiting their dead but in moderation not in a big crowd like there is at the moment. There's so many here, you don't know what they're doing. They, they can't be trusted, simple as that. We want to be British, we want to stay British. And it's up to the people and Argentina should listen to it. We want to be British. So very little love lost in some quarters. Keep your reaction coming through at facebook.com slash world have your say. In a couple of minutes time, I'll show you what, I'll show you what happened when we connected a group of islanders and a group of Argentines. Well, let's go straight across to Ben, who's with the World Have Your Say team, where all of your calls are arriving. Ben, what can you tell us? Well, people getting in touch with us to label both sides in this as imperial and colonial. Uh, Billy, for example, posts on Facebook from Lilongwe in Malawi. He says Britain has to get over its colonial hang-ups. Imagine if the Isle of Wight was in the hands of foreigners, would they feel the same way? Uh, but Samuel, who's in the UK, posts on Facebook, the Argentinians can keep their creepy imperial ambitions to themselves. The islands and islanders are British. And here's a tweet from Sahaja, who's watching, I think, in Mexico. Yeah, she's just tweeted, Britain and Argentina have a wonderful opportunity now to show the world how two nations can work together. Can't we just share the Falklands? Indeed, if you are online, there's a few ways you can get involved with World Have Your Say. Facebook.com slash World Have Your Say is one option. You can also get us on Twitter. Our handle is at BBC underscore WHYS, and we're live, so if you comment, we'll get everything straight away. Well, let's go back to the Falklands and to Argentina, where everyone calls the islands the Malvinas. Despite there being only a few hundred kilometres between them, we certainly found that Argentines and islanders have very, very little to do with each other. There's no cultural, social or economic exchange. And the only flight from the islands to South America doesn't go to Argentina, it goes to Santiago. But we travelled with the hope that for one broadcast at least, we could make a connection. Well, as you can see, it's a filthy day here in Stanley, although the people who call this town home say this is nothing particularly unusual. And in a minute, we're going to try and do something we've not done before on World Have Your Say. We're going to broadcast a live radio programme on the BBC World Service and connect a group here in Stanley with another group of guests in Buenos Aires. And we're going to have uh, both guests up on big screens. They'll be able to see each other as well. Hopefully, it'll create some conversations that we'll all want to hear. And of course, the programme is much the better when the two people directly engage. And, and while we were sheltering inside and getting ready for the discussion, at La Biela Cafe in Buenos Aires, our Argentine guests were also arriving. And of course, we'll answer your questions too. Ros is here with the World Have Your Say team in Stanley. Sheila is with another team in Argentina. But as much as possible, we'll do this on our own. Call us on country code 44. 20, 70, 83, 72, 72. Hello, um, my name's Hello, Liam. I work for the Falkland Islands Company at the West Door. I'm here with the rest of the group from Port Stanley, Falkland Islands. Hello, everybody in Argentina. Hello. 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 Now to the first question. My family has been here for 170 years, proud Falkland Islanders. Now, 
do you appreciate that this country is my home as much as Argentina is to you? Okay, first of all, I'd like to say we're here in Buenos Aires in a beautiful place here, and that question is very difficult to answer. For undoubtedly that when living so many years have you been there, you have to consider it is your home in that way. And nobody is acknowledging that, that you feel that that's your home. But that is a land that Argentina has been reclaiming for so many years, and we believe that we have to find an option for us that you continue to feel your home, but we can also be part of it. We want to be part of it with you. We don't want to be without you. The UK have been the bullies of the world for centuries. They still have 10 colonies which have to be talked. And uh, I, I want to ask you this question. If, uh, if the islands didn't have the natural resources or the strategic position to the Pacific and Antarctica, do you sincerely think with your hand on your hearts that David Cameron would keep this NATO base in the South Atlantic would send um, a high-tech destroyer plus a, a nuclear sub submarine and Prince William in full battle dress just, just to protect you, 3,000 uh, islanders? I think he wouldn't. It's quite clear the British position on all its overseas territories. We're certainly not a colony. Uh, we're a self-governing, self-financing uh, island territory which is responsible for all its own affairs except foreign policy and defence. And the only reason we need a uh, significant UK military presence here is the um, continual rhetoric from the Argentine government that is continually aggressive and bullying in its nature. Yeah, I would say, uh, agreeing with Andy, that actually uh, the Cameron government has been very supportive of the Falkland Islands and actually of the Falkland Islands voice and of recognising that we decide how things are run. Britain will support us, but it's up to us. There was a comment that we unilaterally decided to explore for oil. That's not quite the case. We were in dialogue with Argentina about sharing an area for oil exploration. Uh, we went into an agreement in 1995. Argentina pulled out in 2007. But we have licensed these oil companies to drill for oil in our waters and we will gain um, the revenue from that from that drilling. Um, I'd like to know whether you feel that the Argentine government, if the Argentines had sovereignty over the Falkland Islands, would also keep the revenue from those resources for the Falkland Islands people. I think there's another example of Argentine double standard. You say that we were against the drilling, but we support, the government supported this mining, this open air mining that is polluting our own soil. And uh, as a fact, the Santa Cruz province, where the Kirchners hail from, is twice the size of England, twice. And it has 200,000 people. So instead of worrying over the Falklands, maybe we should worry about our own empty country and how to get our own resources that nobody disputes. OK, you're willing to talk to us if we give up on our sovereignty claims. And it makes no sense, because you are telling us to give up on our position. So I think the aim of any conversation should be to agree on a new scenario, not to give up, not to, you know, yes, to, to think about the conditions and to talk about it. So it, it shouldn't be a condition, OK? You change your mind, and then we talk. No, we should all talk together to reach a new agreement. What do you think about that? Um, well, I really believe that as far as we're concerned, we're very happy with the way we live. We, we don't actually recognize that Argentina has a legitimate claim to the Falkland Islands. And we know that your constitution suggests that the only outcome of negotiations has to be Argentine sovereignty of the Falkland Islands. So it makes us very uneasy about entering into negotiations because we feel that you've already determined the outcome. From our point of view here, we, we, we listen to a lot of the, the comments that come out from, these, um, from the political leader and the, the foreign minister. And a recent example would be where they, where they were talking about the, the, um, the mobile phone sites here in the Falklands. And they've been described as, as spy satellites and radar stations that we constantly hear this level of rubbish at a, at a high political level from Christina Kirshner and from Tinnerman. And I just wonder, do you, do you guys believe everything they say? And I'm not talking about what's printed in the media here, but when they're stood up speaking at the United Nations or some other organization, do you believe every fact that they will say? I don't support the, the new rhetoric like the presentations in the United Nations. I think they're a bit pointless. Um, 
but well, I, I, I like to look at several sources and especially authoritative sources. So um, as a matter of fact, I, I, I think I saw more articles in English language media that were contradictory with uh, authoritative sources, even from the UK. So I, I think it's a bit of a myth that, that the Argentines are being like brainwashed or blindly following. It's obvious that this is a country with 40 million people. And we've, we have been claiming for the islands since for, for almost 180 years. It, it would be very odd to, to say that all, all the people here are just blind, blindly following uh, uh, a story that has been made up. Hello, uh, my name is Brett. I'm from Texas. Uh, that's in the United States. And I'm a student here in Buenos Aires. Uh, I was wondering, hypothetically, if uh, the Falklands were declared as Argentine property, would you all be willing to accept the Argentine laws and policies, or would you be, uh, would you want to rebel and maybe make a counterclaim? Um, pretty much to sum that one up, is there anyone out there that will train us in guerrilla warfare? Because that's how it comes down to, we feel so passionately about this place as you do your home. If America invaded Argentina, completely hypothetical, America invaded Argentina, you would fight for it, you would fight with your lives to save your home. And that's exactly how we all feel here. Liam there providing an uncompromising end to the discussion. It had been fascinating for us to watch and listen to, but how had our guests found the experience? I enjoyed the show today. It was very interesting. It was nice to hear what the Argentinian people had to say, but I still don't trust the Argentinian government. This is the first time I've ever been able to speak to Argentines in Argentina, really listening to their views. And I thought I was a great leap forward. We were able to get a dialogue between them all. But too many of them are looking at the history and too many of them are listening to Kircher and that is what's stopping aggression. I learned a lot from the debate. Andres told me a lot of information I didn't know about Malvinas settlements by Argentines. And I think I changed my position a little bit. So I think it's very informative. I think it was, it was entirely positive. I think at the end of the debate, uh, we ended up like, like friends, really. I can see that there are more contradictions between ourselves than the islanders. I see they are a homogeneous group and they seem to agree that they don't want to be messed up by Argentine people. But I think that it opened a discussion and that we Argentine people should talk more between ourselves and start really a social discussion that is not the same that the government is, has come up with, but our own discussion. So that is how it went. Lots of you getting in touch through Twitter and Facebook, also calling at the moment. We've got a problem with our phone system. We can see you calling us. We can't pick up the calls. We're going to try and fix that. In the meantime, I apologise. But before that problem started, calls came in from Spain, Mauritius, Germany, Egypt, Somalia and Ethiopia. Let's quickly bring in Ben, who's with the team, answering your calls. Give us an idea of some more of the comments that have come in, Ben? Well, some people on Facebook focusing on the geography, much like some of the people there in Argentina. Benedict in Namibia, for example, posting uh, for former colonisers like Britain to align themselves with the modern world and keep their hands off of the territory, if not falling under their immediate geographic locations. But Simon in the UK posts, forget geographical proximity to Argentina. It's no claim at all. Our friends in Buenos Aires will have to do better than that. Thank you very much, Ben. It's an interesting point, is it? Whether looking at the map and seeing how close those islands are to the mainland has got anything to do with this discussion. Do email us if you'd like to take part. World have your say at bbc.com. Put your phone number if you'd like us to get back to you and put you on the air. For the next half an hour, we'll hear your reaction to those films. <laughs> I'm Ros Atkins. On today's World Have Your Say, we're talking about the Falklands, or the Malvinas, as some of you will call them. We've just seen two films that we made during a visit to the islands and to Buenos Aires last week. If you missed them, you can see both at facebook.com slash worldhaveyoursay. And for the next half an hour, we'll get your reaction to what our guests on both sides of this argument had to say to each other. And of course, we'll hear your ideas on how best to resolve the huge differences between the islanders and the British on one side and the Argentines on the other. Wherever you're watching, we're live here on the BBC and you're very welcome to take part.
Now, as I was saying a moment ago, there are three parties in this dispute over the Falkland Islands, or the Malvinas, as they're also called. The Islanders, the British government, and the Argentine government. Well, let's meet some guests who can give us uh, those three perspectives. Graham Bound is an islander, an author of Fortress Falklands. He's live in London. Fernando Petrea is a former Argentine deputy foreign minister. He's also a former ambassador to the UN. He's live from New York. And also in London is Paul Whiteway from the advisory group Independent Diplomat. He's a former British Foreign Office diplomat who worked in Latin America and in the Falkland Islands. All three of you, you're very welcome here on World Have Your Say. You've all seen what we recorded when we were in Buenos Aires and on the islands. And perhaps, Graham, you could start us off with your reaction, but the other two of you, feel free to, to come in off the back of Graham. Well, I found, Ross, that it was really quite heartening because for the first time in a very long time, uh, we heard the whole issue being discussed in a way which is not inflammatory, which is not um, full of uh, militant nationalism. And I think what it showed me is that if you can get away from that inflammatory rhetoric that comes from politicians uh, like Mrs. Kirshner, then you can find ordinary islanders and ordinary Argentines who are quite prepared to listen to one another. Um, it was an impressive um, performance and a demonstration that people can actually talk. Fernando? Yes, I can agree what uh, Mr. Bound said. I think that the, all these uh, anniversaries prompting an internal debate in Argentina, which uh, we really deserve to have, and people is looking at the issue with uh, more clear ways, and uh, I think that we are aiming to closer cooperation, if possible. Um, just commenting uh, on, on that, I mean, my, my reaction um, was that uh, the, uh, the... I thought the film was very poignant in, in the way in which it showed the veterans in front of the war memorial. And uh, I thought that was, that was very sad to see the way in which people 30 years ago had lost their lives uh, in this dispute. And by contrast, I thought it was heartening uh, seeing the contacts which your program had, uh, had made uh, between the, um, the islanders on the one hand and people in Buenos Aires uh, on the other. But at the same time, I think one should go back to some of the basics underlying this dispute, which is that it's essentially about self-determination for the islanders. It's about their right to self-determination, which is enshrined in the UN Charter and in other international agreements. And this is something which nobody can actually take away from them. And they have, uh, uh, at various stages, uh, uh, been able to express their right to self-determination by means of their democratically elected representatives. And they've made it clear that they wish to remain British. And the British government has respected that wish. And that, that is the basis for the, the UK position on the Falklands. Fernando. Well, I, I, I understand very well the British position. But I think that uh, there is a lot of, re uh, of uh, uh, legislation about the dispute, uh, not only at the UN, but also at the Organization of American States and many other bodies. So we, I, I think that the problem is not of self-determination, it's a problem of cooperation, it's a problem of, uh, of uh, discussing the bottom of the, of the dispute uh, at, at, at the best moment possible. It's not this the best moment possible to go to the bottom of the dispute. We have so many issues for cooperation now. We have a new agenda. We have new ambassadors in either country. We have to move in to deepen cooperation and to move to closer association with a uh, strong degree of, uh, of uh, uh, in the, uh, let's say, of, of uh, uh, the, the, the islanders be free to to, to move in the direction they wish and uh, to strengthen the link with Argentina is the only way to exploit reasonably the natural resources. Now, all, all I think that the main issue now is that and not the bottom of the problem. Well, if I may comment on that, the um, issue is, is now um, one of, um, on the one hand, the uh, British government being unwilling to talk about the sovereignty issue but on the other hand, being perfectly willing to talk about all the other issues affecting the islands, including, of course, the exploitation of the hydrocarbons and the question of uh, fisheries conservation around the islands. Um, and, of course, it was Argentina that walked away from the various uh, bilateral agreements. I'm sure that the British government, for whom, incidentally, I, I don't speak, uh, would be very happy to, to go back and, and talk about these issues once again. I'm curious well, to know... This is 
Graham, go ahead and then we'll give Fernando a chance yeah. to respond. No, I was listening to Mr. Petreo there suggesting that this is a good time to talk. Um, really, I'm surprised that he thinks this is a good time to talk when all of the agreements that were made back in about 1999 were thrown out by the Argentine government. And for them, the whole issue of talking has boiled down to one thing, and that's whose flag flies over the islands. Um, really, I think Mrs. Kirshner and Mr. Timmerman have made it quite clear that they only want to talk about one thing. Whereas, you know, really we had talked about practical things and the chance was there. Uh, Mr. Bound, uh, let me tell you that uh, the problem with the agreements, which I think that were very, very good, was British unilateralism. And this, this was basically the problem in fisheries and was basically the problem in, in hydrocarbons. Uh, I, I think that the, the, the occasion is again to discuss these issues and to move to cooperation would be the only way to proceed. Could you imagine, Mr. Bound, what is going to happen if there is malpractice in the oil exploration or exploitation? Uh, you, you, can you bear in mind what has been going on in the Gulf of Mexico? What is going on now with Chevron in Brazil? Who is going to foot the bill if there is a problem? We better do things together. We better share responsibilities and share the benefits in the South Atlantic. This is, this is the idea to move now. We have, we have to leave back, to leave aside, to leave behind the recriminations. I, I think that there is the, the only way to go about is through cooperation, to deepen co cooperation, uh, maintaining the, a, a high degree of autonomy for the islands. I think just um, commenting on that, um, it's quite a strange way to go about cooperation when you um, introduce uh, measures which prevent uh, Falkland Islands flagged vessels from visiting ports in Latin America, and that's a very threatening uh, thing to do. <laughs> that uh, doesn't exactly create the right atmosphere for bilateral discussion. Well, Mr. Bound, you have to also remember that not even sailing boats of Argentina were allowed to, stop, to make a stop at the island. Uh, for many years, for but many years, you, 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 being, you being really uh, unpleasant with Argentines traveling to the islands. So we have to put the cards on the table and to start again. Now let, let, me, let, me, let, me just jump, let me just jump in here because, uh, Fernando, you're talking about putting cards on the table. But, Graham, I have to be honest with you. One of the things that I was struck by when I was visiting the Falklands is that very few people are interested in talking to Argentina. They just simply say, these islands are ours, there is no conversation to be had. And as one of our guests in Buenos Aires said, you aren't offering us anything, you're not saying there's anything to talk about. Well, I think that's fair enough. Your impressions are correct. I don't think there is any will whatsoever to talk about any other ownership of the islands other than by Britain uh, as a trustee, if you like, for the Falkland Islanders who will determine the way their little island nation um, develops. But um, the question was brought up about whether, in fact, um, I think it was brought up by one of the people online, the listeners, about whether there can be a sharing of the islands. And in a funny kind of way, there can be. There can be a sharing of resources. There can be um, a sharing of the natural resources and the exploitation thereof. And there can be agreements about that. And right up until 1999, that was happening. And it really, Argentines were allowed in up until, well, still are, have been mm -hmm. since 1999. So to say that the Argentine militant action to to blockade the islands, frankly, is in response to any attitude in the Falklands now is, well, frankly, nonsense. Lots of our viewers are responding to what the three of you have got to say. Fernando's live from New York. Paul and Graham are live in London. Marcus in Puerto Rico's emailed, the Argentines' greed knows no bound. They even have sovereignty claims over Antarctica. But well, imagine what would happen if they did that. And uh, Ken has just tweeted us using the WHYS hashtag. What's more important is that what's most important is that the islanders' wishes are respected and that of course is the position of the Prime Minister David Cameron in Britain. Let's pull up this message from Faith Lewis who is in the Falklands. She's posted on our Facebook page. Uh, the tactics used by Argentina to try and pressure us into becoming Argentine are odious. Who would want to be part of a country like that, I ask you? Britain is far from perfect but as the old saying goes, better the devil you know. Well we'll get Fernando to respond to that point Faith in a couple of minutes time but uh, First of all, let's bring in Ben from the World Have Your Say team and find out uh, what some of your calls have been saying. 
country code 4420 70 83 72 72 we'll, we'll of course call you straight back uh, to get your points on air Aline phoned in uh, from New Zealand what's happened to the indigenous people he wants to know who are the indigenous people clearly not the British uh, David's also phoned in from Germany he is British and he says I can remember in the 1950s the UK planted their flag in other parts of the world it's daylight robbery and finally Peter called in from Vietnam with this point he's also British I was in the Falklands in the 1950s I'm annoyed the BBC are referring to the Falklands as Malvinas. It's the Falklands, he says. Ben, thank you very much indeed. Well, as anyone who watches or listens to the BBC will know, we call it the Falkland Islands and reference the fact that lots of people call them the Malvinas. Now, stay with us. We'll put that point to Fernando about what Argentina would do with the islanders if sovereignty was handed to Argentina in a couple of minutes' time. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ros Atkins. Thanks for joining me on World Have Your Say. We're talking about the Falklands or the Malvinas as they're called in Argentina. World Have Your Say visited Argentina and the islands last week. We played you a couple of films that we shot while we were there. You can still see those at facebook.com slash world have your say. And we're now discussing uh, the future of the islands. I can see calls coming in from Thailand, Nepal, Australia and Singapore. Uh, Dennis in Malawi says, I fail to understand why part of Great Britain is found in an area that's closer to Argentina. I'm confused, he says. Well, I'm sure uh, Paul or Graham, our guests, can respond to that in a moment. But first of all, let's go back to Fernando Petrea, live from New York. He's a former Argentine deputy foreign minister and a former Argentine ambassador to the UN. And just before the break, Fernando, we had a message from a Falkland Islander essentially saying she was concerned about what Argentina would do with the islanders if ever sovereignty was passed to Argentina. What would you say to her if she's still watching? Well, I, I would say that uh, nobody ever said that the islanders should resign their British nationality. In fact, most Argentinians have dual nationality and they have a European Union passport. And nobody ever said that the islanders should uh, dislodge the island or to move out of the island. We can understand very well what we are saying that we have to move in closer cooperation and a degree of association with the island, with a high degree of autonomy for the island. This could be the first step to be able to discuss the exploitation of the natural resources. Otherwise it would be very, very, very difficult. This is my message to the islanders. Graham, you have lived on the islands. Does that sound something that could work for you? No, I really don't believe that many islanders, if any, would go for that. I, I, the, the thing is, they are enjoying such a level of autonomy that it is almost independence. Um, and I don't think anybody would believe that Argentina, that let's say Buenos Aires, would wish to see Falkland Islanders making their own laws, controlling their own taxes, uh, every kind of tax, controlling immigration, um, controlling the exploitation of fisheries and oil. Uh, I don't think it's credible. Let's pull up this message from Benedict in Namibia who posted at facebook.com slash world have your say. Is this neo-colonialism or what? It's a truly sad day in this day and age that the British support such injustices perpetrated by their forefathers. While the forefathers he might have in mind are the settlers who arrived in 1833. Paul, is there anything to be ashamed of when you look back at British history on these islands? I don't think so. Um, the um, expulsion of the Argentine military garrison in 1833 was a, actually a peaceful uh, affair. The uh, British claim to the islands goes back to the 18th century um, when Argentina itself did not actually uh, exist. Um, since 1833, there has been a period of continuous uh, British occupation, except for 74 days in 1982. Um, the islands uh, have um, not only established peace and stability, they have democratic institutions of which they can be rightly proud. They have exercised their right of self-determination, which is to remain an overseas territory of the United Kingdom. So I, I don't see that there's anything uh, to be ashamed of in, 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 in looking at the history. All right, well, Benedict, if you're still watching, feel free to respond to what Paul uh, had to say about your comment. Let's pull up one last message. Ivan, on our Facebook page, writes, England and Argentina should share the place, have a flag that incorporates the colour of both flags and an anthem 
that takes words and music from both anthems. Let's have the folk mean as he says. Well, my visit to the Falklands suggests that wouldn't go down very well. Graham, I'm guessing you're not enthusiastic about that. Well, I try to, try to be objective about this, but I mean, I just think that's, um, with all respect, I, I think that's an idea that isn't going to work. It, I probably wouldn't be accepted by Argentines either. The tone of the politics coming out of Buenos Aires, let's not forget, is very extreme. OK, and Fernando, would you be interested in a new anthem mixing English and Spanish? Well, I do not agree exactly what uh, Mr. Graham Baum just said. I think that the message from Buenos Aires is a message of cooperation. I think that the best example is China and Taiwan. They have a claim and yet they cooperate extensively. Mm -hmm. And this is the idea, this is the idea of the future. We have to discuss the idea, to consider the idea. Otherwise, it would be very difficult for the island to develop the natural resources. We've Fernando? been talking about that since I, I was Fernando, a junior I'm going to have to jump in here because we are right up to the end of the programme. Thanks to you, Graham and Paul. It's been a pleasure listening to you talk. And thanks to all of the people who we met when we visited the islands. <laughs>